Hello, stranger. How are you? It has been a hot minute since I spoke with you last. Um, so I wanted to come and talk to you guys for a little bit. So um, today I went and saw my surgeon for my three-year post-op uh, appointment checkup. So, oh my gosh, it's been so long since I've done this. So I had um, a modified duodenal, uh, duodenal switch, I believe on March the 9th, 2016. Um, today is February the 27th, 2019. Um, so I'm about a week ahead of my, my um, three-year post-op uh, appointment. So my highest weight ever was 401 pounds. My surgery weight was 385 pounds, thereabouts. Um, and right now I'm at about 180-ish. I kind of hover between around 180. Um, so I've lost you know, over 200 pounds. Um, last April of 2018, I had um, first round of plastics. I had a lower body lift and a breast lift. Um, I'm not sure if you can see me, but basically this is what's up now. Lower body lift, got rid of that panis. Um, my butt's still a little weird. My legs are awful, but um, this is it. This is me now, three, uh, three years post-op. Mm. Oh, coffee, I still love coffee. Um, so, I'm trying to remember when I talked with you guys last. It was probably last October-ish, I think. So what's happened since then? I'll get into the specifics of my post-op um, appointment in just a minute. I'm just trying to catch you guys up. Um, let's see. So um, me personally, I've been doing great. Um, I still exercise um, five days a week doing cardio, uh, whether it be the treadmill or the elliptical, uh, for between 45 minutes to 60 minutes every day, uh, depending upon what's kind of going on. But I do try to carve out some time every day during the week to do exercise. Um, in terms of my eating choices, I get at least 100 grams of protein every day, uh, which I do track on my fitness pal. I do not necessarily track everything else. My main goal every day is to make sure I get at least 100 grams of protein and as long as I get that then I'm happy with that. Um, apart from that I pretty much eat whatever it is that I want whether it be bad choices or good choices um, and I'm okay with that. Um, I kind of have a threshold if I get beyond 185 at that point I'll start considering you know going back to basics monitoring my carb intake and all that but I haven't really hit that threshold. I have a couple of times and then, like I said, I kind of ratchet it back and um, I try to wink, br bring my weight back down. But right now, around 180, I'm perfectly fine at this. I'm perfectly healthy um, and, and comfortable with the weight that I am right now. I feel good on my own skin, um, so that that's good. So, um, let me see. So last October, what have I done? So my husband has had a lot of surgeries. So back in December of 2017, he had a sleeve. Um, he was not a good candidate for the DS like I had um, because of some other um, health issues that he has. He has to be able to take um, NSAIDs and Aleve and Naproxen. So um, you really aren't supposed to take those sort of drugs if you're, um, if you're a DS patient. So, so he wasn't a good candidate. So he, anyway regardless. So he lost about 80 pounds and that was um, a result or all of that was leading up to having this major hernia surgery that he had to have, which he did have um, last August. So maybe I did talk to you about that since then. Anyway, it was very complicated. It was very, um, there were lots of issues around it. And so it was really touch and go. He had some JP drains in for those of you who are familiar with JP drains, you know how much they suck. I had mine and remember I used to complain about them after my plastics. But he had his, at one point he had 10 JP drains. And then he had that, he had his last one for a total of six months. So he doesn't have any drains anymore. He's well on the road to recovery, but that's kind of taken up a lot of our time and our, a lot of our attention. Um, that was actually one of the questions that my doctor asked me um, today 
in my um, my post-op appointment because the surgeon that my husband had for his uh, sleeve as well as all of his hernia repair stuff is the same surgeon that I have. So it's funny when I came in, he's like, oh, finally we get to talk about you because normally we're talking about my husband. Um, so what have I done since then? Since I talked with you, just kind of working and doing my own routine. Um, no, I've, I've gone to, on a couple of trips since then. I've gone to New Orleans to visit some friends. I went there for Mardi Gras. Whew, still recovering from that, but it was wonderful. I will say for those of you who are, you know, experienced and, and you understand, uh, for those, for those people who are weight loss, you know, surgery patients, um, alcohol hits us much, much quicker, um, than it does certainly pre-op, but, uh, I get drunk pretty, pretty quickly, pretty easily. I'm pretty cheap date, which is nice. Um, but I really have to, you know, I can't keep up with everybody else. I really got to pace myself and you should always eat, um, food when you drink alcohol and you should also stay well hydrated. So I always, always, I would have like a drink, you know, um, I try to stay away from sugar drinks when I do drink alcohol. My go-to generally is either I drink red wine or uh, my main drink is probably vodka soda. So no sugar in it other than the vodka, but I don't you know, mix it with juice or anything like that. I might do a splash of cranberry, but usually vodka soda. Um, but I always encourage people to eat something if you're going to drink alcohol, pace yourself. And I typically double fist, so if I have a drink of vodka, I have water. And every time I take, you know, between um, alcoholic drinks, and honestly, I'd only drink probably two or three, and I'm plastered, but drink plenty, plenty of water, stay hydrated, and not just like vodka or whatever, but <clears throat> drink plenty of water. I typically drink, um, regardless if I'm, if I'm drinking alcohol or not, I typically drink about um, three liters three liters of, of liquids, uh, non-caffeinated liquids a day. Um, so I'm always saying well hydrated. Um, so let's talk a little bit about my appointment today with Dr. Tyner, Dr. Michael Tyner. He was the one who did my surgery back in 2016. Um, and to be honest, we talked more about my husband and his health situation more so than mine. But my, I had gone in a couple of weeks prior to my, my appointment with Dr. Tyner to have them draw my my lab work or my blood work so that way we would the results will be ready for today's appointment so that way i could make any modifications should i need to to my dosages and everything checked out everything i was within the normal ranges of everything there was one where i was slightly on the lower end of the normal range and that was vitamin e so i did uh, go on amazon and purchase some vitamin e supplements and i'm going to add those to my my regular daily um regimen um, for, for vitamin supplements. My ferritin was low. Despite taking um, oral supplements of iron every day, the issue is with the DS, and this is quite common from what I understand, um, I just simply, I don't, despite taking those oral supplements, my body's not absorbing them. So my ferritin level is relatively low. It's lower than they would like. I'm not anemic but I also understand that I have had the need in the past of, um, of having iron deficiency anemia. So I ended up having to go and have some iron infusions. And I would suspect that that's going to be a regular thing. I think the last time I had, I had iron infusions was probably, oh shoot. I'm going to say late 2016, early 2017. And they've lasted up until this point, but now it's starting to dip down. He doesn't seem to think that the um, hematologist is going to want to go ahead and give me iron infusions because I'm not anemic. But um, within the next week, I'm going to be traveling out of the country. I'm going to go up to Canada again for probably three to four weeks. And I think once I get back from that trip, I'll make an, appo an appointment with the oncologist. Um, um, uh, it's a hematologist slash oncologist. I don't have I don't need an oncologist, but I'm going to go see the hematologist and have them at least check my levels to, and they can make the determination if I need to get some, um, iron infusions again. Um, it's funny cause when I got my, when I went and I got my blood work done, you know, you have to wait a few days and then you can see the results. And I, then I, <clears throat> I saw the re results come through on my chart and I said my ferritin was low. And then I, it must be psychological. I was like, 
you know, I have been feeling fatigued lately. I don't know if that's necessarily true or if it's just a psychosomatic symptom of seeing it on the screen that my ferritin was low. Um, or if I truly do feel a little bit fatigued, but I will say I, you know, I still have plenty of energy, um, much more so than I ever did once upon a time. Um, so that was the only issue. Um, it was funny, he brought in a, a PA with him who I'd never met before. And so, you know, Dr. Tyner was really, really nice. And I don't know if he does this for everybody, but he was, you know, singing my praises. He was saying, you know, Amy really committed to this. There are lots of people who, who you know, go for, for weight loss surgery and, and don't necessarily commit to it. And, uh, if, and I, he seems to think that I did. And, you know, so I was, I was explaining to the, because the PA was asking me, he's like, how is it that it worked for you where it doesn't work for other people? And I said, I, I don't know. I don't really have an answer to that. Other than to say, this was the last shot for me. Like I have struggled with my weight my entire life. I was going to I was just about to say my entire adult life, but it truly has been like, I feel like since I was eight or nine years old, I've struggled with my weight. You know, I had tried lots of different programs, Nutrisystem, Weight Watchers, and they all, I, wa I lost a little bit of weight, maybe 20, 30 pounds, but it always came back. And then I gained on top of that. So that just wasn't a, a very good solution for me. So, you know, by having the surgery, he gave me the tools to really take the bull by the horns and just capitalize the shit out of it. And so, and that's what I did. So this is kind of my new normal. So I, wa I went for my appointment this morning and I had a coffee with me. And he walked in and uh, he said, is there protein powder in that? And I was like, of course there is. Of course there is. And uh, he said, is there really? I was just joking. I said, I have two coffees every morning. Um, one of them is caffeinated and one has decaf because I don't want to be hopped up on caffeine all day long. But I just like the taste of coffee. So I have one caffeinated coffee every day and I put in a scoop of protein powder. And then I have another one in the morning, um, which is decaf also with protein powder. So before I even get to my morning snack, I've had two coffees and I've already had 20 grams of protein. And when you have a goal of 100 grams a day, you know, every little bit helps. And then, so I typically nurse those two coffees between 7.30 and 10 o'clock. So I just sip on them throughout the morning. And then around 10 o'clock is when I'll have my first snack. And usually it's a, it's a protein shake um, and I'll have that. So. And then my first legit like meal meal is usually around lunchtime, which, which for me is probably around um, 11, 30, 12 o'clock ish. And that's when I have like a legit meal. Um, lately I have been doing, I've been on a bit of a tuna melt kick. So I get a piece of, you know, low carb bread, toast it, you know, on a frying pan with, you know, uh, butter on each side or margarine, I suppose, whatever you want. And then um, I put a piece of cheese on it plenty of tuna salad, lots of tuna, cause it's got lots of protein and then another piece of cheese and then I cover it and let it get all sizzly and bubbly and delicious. And then I have that. And I think, um, let me see, according to my fitness pal, let me see, it's got, it's, oops, it's got pretty good macros on it. It certainly has more protein. My concern was the bread, you know, the bread, ha even if it's just one piece of bread, it has a lot of carbs, but because I put like half a cup of, of um, tuna on it plus the cheese it really helps let me see if it's on here um there we go i don't know why it's not on here it must not be syncing properly hmm. let me see if i can search because i know i put it in here today ah there we are so for that meal for my lunch I have Hold on, I'm scrolling on this stupid thing. It's 18 grams of I'm sorry. 25 grams of protein and 14 grams of carbs. So I do that for lunch and so, you know, I still it's easy to do. I yes, I do use supplements. I use protein powder whether it be in my coffee or a pro, one protein shake a day, but I still you know, when you have a goal of like 100 grams of protein a day, shit, sometimes you have to supplement and get all the help you can. So, um, so you got to kick out of that fact. And I said, well, I drink coffee. I don't put it in my hot tea because I'm a hot tea drinker, but I don't put protein powder in that. I don't know why, but I do with um, coffee. 
Uh, let's see. What else? Mmm. I don't know if this is related to weight loss. It's more, and I think I've said this before um, several times, is that with weight loss surgery and losing a lot of weight in a relatively short period of time, um, yes, there's a lot of physical changes that happen, and that's certainly what people notice, but it's the mental. It's the psychological stuff that really impacts me, and I would think most people the most. Um, it takes the mind and the emotions a longer time to catch up. So for a long time, even now still, three years later, I, I still identify probably as a as a fat girl, right? I was I feel like I was born that way. But it's just the way it is. But with time and a new routine, um, I've developed more confidence. And I've talked about this before as it relates to my professional career. Um, as well like I would always be really nervous about getting up and talking in front of a group of people because I would feel that you know they were looking at my weight more so than listening to the words that I say um, but I think with with the weight loss and feeling more confident it has it has empowered me to be more confident in a professional sense as well despite the fact that my quality of work is essentially the same it's still me and my process is still the same but for whatever reason I don't know I think I've it's empowered me to become a little more confident and, and sure of myself. Um, and maybe it allows other people to buy into that. If I feel it, they'll feel it, you know, that sort of thing. But I found out yesterday, which is super cool, that I won an award at work, which is probably the, so far in my professional career, I'm 38 years old, aren't I? Yes, I'll be 39 this year. Um, so I'm 38 years old. This has been the highest probably praise or recognition that I've ever received in my professional career. But I found out that I got this MVP award and uh, wasn't a cash prize or anything like that. But what they are doing for me is um, sending me and my husband on a four day trip to Jamaica in May, which is crazy. Um, and don't get me wrong, the trip itself is, is wonderful and I'm so appreciative of that and I'm very excited about it. But the fact that I feel um, the recognition and the the effort and the contributions that I'm making at a professional level are being recognized by not just my peers but like my superiors and their superiors like this was the executive team that that um, or the the leadership team had nominated me several different people and then the executive team was the one who made the decision that I want it so just having that validation that my contributions are valued um, I think that helps me even more that just says you're doing the right thing. People are recognizing it. And there's one thing, you know, to say that you feel that I feel my, you know, I'm doing the best I can, but for other people to recognize it as well, it's very validating. And, um, I take a lot of pride in, in my job. You know, I don't have children or anything like that. I, I work, um, and I'm super proud of my career. I don't think, I don't know if I could have it all. You know, some people say they could have it all. They could have children and a career. I don't think I'm one of those people. Um, not that I don't feel I'm talented enough, but I just, I don't, I don't think I could do it well. And I think if I was to have children, then that has to be 100% of my focus. That has to be everything. And I'm just not prepared to make that sacrifice, as selfish as that is. So I've kind of put a lot into my career. I have a very, very limited education um, due to some poor choices probably in my childhood. So I've kind of been busting my ass and grinding away and and all this sort of stuff. So anyway, just, I'm really pleased. I'm just tickled by this recognition and you know, and I don't know, and I was thinking about it, does it have to do with the weight loss? And it might to a degree, you know, have something to do with it um, in an indirect way, but um, I think the net net of what I'm blathering on about is that I've got my life back. I felt so limited at 400 pounds. Like I couldn't do, even though I, maybe I could do things, but I felt very limited. I felt very stifled. And I just feel now like the world is opened up and it's just mine to grab and I can do whatever I want. I, I just, it's just, it feels limitless <clears throat> um, as opposed to feeling limited. So, I'm still making the transition, even like I said, three years later, that 
my body's pretty much settled. This is this is what's it. I feel like I've lost, you know, I've lost over 200 pounds. Oh, there's my cat. Hello. You got something you want to say? Don't just stare at me. Poor little thing. Nobody feeds me. Um, where, where was I going with this? Um, yeah, so my body's pretty much, this is, this is it, right? You know, loose skin, big flappy bat wing arms. That's just the way it's going to be unless I decide to have another plastic surgery. But I'm not really committed to make that sort of investment right now. But it's still up here. Up here is still catching up. I still catch myself um, looking in the mirror saying, oh my God, who is that? Because um, I still sometimes feel, it, it does get easier with time. But anyway. I'm just beating a dead horse at this point. So, on, in all honesty, um, things haven't changed all that much for me. Still working my routine. I'm still super religious about taking my vitamins. I feel like I have to be. You know, with the DS, it's very malabsorptive, and so you need all the help you can. And I really, I don't want to become deficient in any sort of vitamin. And this is going to be the protocol now for the rest of my life. So. I think I've explained before that I really use my phone and I have reminders um, or alarms that go off four times a day to remind me to take my different vitamins and I, I stick to that every single day. Every single day I have to be super religious about it and super committed to it um, in the same way that I am, I, I wouldn't, I was going to say the same way that I am about exercise but if I skipped an exercise day I would think that that's acceptable. For me to skip my vitamins, that's unacceptable, and I won't do it. Um, so for all of you patients out there, whether you're a DS patient, a sleeve, RNY, whatever, so important to stay on top of your, your vitamins and to get your labs checked on a regular basis. Um, for me at this point, because I'm so far out, three years, um, I'm getting them done on a annual basis now. But I'll do everything I can and so to continue taking my vitamins. Like I said, my vitamin E was still within the normal range. It was just on the, the lower end of it. So what the hell, I'm going to take an extra supplement and see if I can boost that up a little bit. Excuse me. And then we'll find out whether or not I need to get some iron infusions. I am pr fairly comfortable. I mean, it's a little bit of an inconvenience. But if my biggest problem with this whole weight loss surgery and um, weight loss itself is that I have iron deficiency anemia, that's not something that I can control um, other than getting iron infusions. If my body just won't absorb the iron that I'm taking, then I'm going to have to go somewhere else. Unfortunately, um, I have insurance. Hopefully, that will cover it. Hopefully. Um, so if that's what I got to do, that's what I got to do. Um, from an energy perspective, I have tons of energy. Tons of energy. Like I said, I exercise. I'm always going out. I'm doing things. I'm walking around. Um, and life's just a pleasure. Life is just a pleasure now, and I never, ever thought that that would be possible. Um, you know, and it's funny, in the same sense, so I was just thinking, you know, it's been three years. It's been three years since I had weight loss surgery, and I lost a good, I would say, the majority of my weight within the first probably year and a half. And I can remember, like yesterday, what it was like to be 400 pounds. You know, I remember feeling limited and all that stuff that I was saying earlier. But at the same time, I feel like this has been my new normal for a long time. And uh, it's, it's really weird how that happens. Like, it feels like it's been forever since I was really big. But at the same time, I can remember it like it was yesterday. So, I don't know. It's weird. Um, what else? Um, I'm fortunate in the sense that I've never had um, any issues with GERD. Occasionally I do get a little bit of heartburn, probably because of the coffee. Uh, but honestly, if I take a couple of Tums, then poof, it's gone. Uh, it comes very, very sparingly and very, um, it's very fleeting. It's not serious at all. Um, I understand there's a lot of people that have, that suffer from GERD as a result of having weight loss surgery. I'm fortunately just not one of those people. Um, what else? What else? What else? I think that's about it. Like I said, I got some trips coming up. I'm looking forward to that. And trips are so much more fun now because I got tons of energy. Um, and traveling is so much easier, uh, whether it be on an airplane or whatever, because I don't need a seatbelt extender. I can sit comfortably and it's just, you know, much more comfortable. 
So, anyway, I just wanted to give you guys an update and tell you I'm still alive. I'm still kicking. Um, I'm still doing my thing. Um, just don't have a whole lot to report. Labs checked out. Annual checkout worked out really well. And um, things are good. So I hope things are good with you. Uh, if there's anything that I can answer for you or if you have questions about for you newbies out there, please let me know. Um, I'd be glad to help. And um, if I ever have something more substantial to update with, I will give you all, I'll do a quick video. I haven't done a video for a really long time in terms of what do I, what do I eat in a day. Perhaps I should. And I, I do want to try some, some new recipes at some point. Um, but maybe I'll do one of those if I can get up the gumption. Anyway, love you guys very much. I hope you're all doing really, really well. You rock stars. I'll talk with you soon, okay? Bye.